Howdy guys, this is Shane. I thought what I'd do today is show you how I go about recording the backing tracks that I use on my actual YouTube videos and pretty much the process involved in it. I've got three cameras for this behind the scenes. I've got this one, which will be for when I'm talking, this one for when I'm doing the playing, and this one behind me, which is kind of on my computer screen. Now, I'm not actually using an actual mic like I normally would for this video. You're hearing the camera audio. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I want the actual speakers to be heard. So I'm doing it the quickest kind of way that will work the most effectively for both voice and actually recording without having to go through the process of a lot of post-production stuff. So this is just a behind the scenes video and I thought a couple of you guys might get a kick out of this. So there's a couple of things that I first do. I try to find a drum track that inspires me and one that I can actually use for my YouTube video. So I've got two places I get these from. Uh, Jim Dooley is a great YouTube drummer. I'm actually, I have a subscription to his website. So I download the tracks that I feel work for me as well as DrewsDrumTracks.com. He's a mate of mine here in Melbourne, Australia. He's featured on a couple of behind the scenes videos in the past as well. So I'll put links up in the cards and you can check both of their channels out. So I've just found a couple that I really like and I'll show you my, my actual project here. The first one I'm gonna show you is one from Drew's Drum Tracks called 103 Beats Per Minute Country Rock. It's a nice simple groove, I really dig it. So we'll drag that into the timeline. I'll let it do its conversion and then I'll play it for you. Nice and simple. Real drums sound way better than using, you know, like MIDI drums and all that kind of crap. So I prefer to use real drums. I think it just adds a dimension to even doing the YouTube thing that I, I just, I love. So it's awesome. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit louder. All right, so the first thing that I normally do, being that I'm not actually adding any guitar parts anymore, I usually grab my bass, but before I do that, I usually just grab a guitar and play along. I've already done that off camera. So I know what I wanna to record to this. So I'm gonna grab my bass and actually play some bass guitar. So I'll just get it. Now, because doors have such great effects and all that kind of stuff built in, I don't even bother with an amp or any type of amp simulator pedal or anything like that. I plug the bass directly into the sound card, which is a UR22 MK2 by Steinberg. And that is it. So I like to tune up. It's always, if I don't do it, I always regret it. Cause at the end I'm like, oh man, the G is right out. And we are good to go. And I'm gonna give it a go. Now, this is an original song that I wrote years ago. It's one of the first songs that I wrote a long time ago. And you've heard me play this progression a lot on my channel, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna turn it into an actual backing track thing, as opposed to just noodling around. I'm trying to mix it up, so this is something that I had by request to do some stuff that's a little more laid back as well, or cleaner, so I thought this might suit that. And then we'll also probably do another one that's gonna be rocking out a bit, so let's give this a shot. My timing was out with the kick. Now that I know where it is, let's try it again. Turn this up a little more. This volume is good. Now notice I actually let that note trail off and the drum track's got miles to go on here. So what I like to do is kind of scroll to the end of the drum track 
and find the closeout sort of riff or, or outro part of the drums, which is pretty much right here. So I copy that, delete this. This can sometimes take a little while and it's never perfect because, you know, copying and pasting stuff doesn't always work, but I found it to be pretty effective and I've been doing this a lot on my, with my backing tracks. So that's the bit I want to overlay. So I like to just find where the last part of, that's the last uh, the beat there. So I'll, I'll move this up to here and we'll take a listen. I reckon this is gonna sound pretty much right straight away. This is just from experience, it may not, but it should sound pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the rest of those fills. I mean, when you got two guitars going over that, it is awesome. But we can glue these together, just like that, which makes it even better. So that's done. I'm gonna save that, and that's how easy it is for me to do this. Now, my bass playing is very, very simple, but I take note of where the kick and the snare is. I try to lock in on the, on the kick drum. If you listen back to that, I'm pretty sure I was laying down those notes right on the kick, so yeah, hopefully, anyway. All right, so I grabbed another one from Jim Dooley, and this one's called, where is it, where is it, where is it? Loud Rock 92 Beats Per Minute? I think this is it. And I have no idea what I'm gonna to play to this, so let's see how it sounds. This is gonna sound completely different to the last one. After this little noodle at the start, there's a rhythm, which is where the, I'm going to come in. So I just like to experiment. this idea already and this is how I work these out I literally just noodle around this isn't something I've played before and I just try to make it so it's kind of riff based or I like my backing tracks to go somewhere so when I'm playing lead I can sort of take it somewhere so I think for this particular change I'm just gonna sit on the E and the A um, and just do that uh, Bring a little more click into the sound here. Now I'll stick with that, that's easy. All right, let's give, give it a go. Get through the noodles. Good, because I can put my overlay up on this particular section. You know, whatever the demo is, that's the plan.
right, that's probably enough. I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before, which was go to the end of the drum track and copy back the end over the over the top. Now, hopefully that was long enough. Yeah, it's long enough. It's a minute. It's just long enough. <laughs> Oops. Now I've got all of this really, really big. I wouldn't normally look at the view on the screen like this, but I figured it'd be easier for everyone to see what I'm doing. Um, and especially when I'm splicing bits like this as well, this is actually um, a really good way of working. The bigger, the better. All right. Let's see if this works. I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna have to move this back because that's the last beat there. All right, something like this, maybe. Uh, all right. So I'll take that last beat. I'll move it to here. No, I'll move it to here. Perfect. It sounds a little clunky, like I said, once you hear it, oops, once you hear it in context, it is going to be perfect. So um, that is it. So that's two done. What's this groove rock one? Let's try this. Yeah, here we go. All right, this will this will do. What I'll do here, um, I'll play probably another one of my songs over the top of this, which I've never played on bass. Uh, I just use that, that's kind of easy. So there's two kicks right there, so we'll have a listen. ending. I played that out until the fill. So as you can see, I stuck on the E. So now I know when I hear this back, when I'm actually jamming with guitar, once it goes to the F, it goes to the G, it goes twice, and then it will just jam out on the A up until the predictable point of the drums. So I'm going to do exactly what I did earlier. Just It almost feels like I don't even need to paste anything from the drums uh, over the top of the end there, but I'm still going to have a look and just see if, it, if it's something I if there's something at the end of this I can use. I may have already used this drum track before, so it sounds pretty familiar, and it, uh, it felt good to play to actually as well. Jim Dooley makes great stuff, go support him. Two bucks a month, man, if you do this sort of stuff, it's great. Um, and then, and then, I wanna find those last two. All right, so essentially, I'm thinking we might cut it from here. Oops. Move this one up. Always hold control when you use new innuendo here. I'm going to get rid of this. Listen. Perfect. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. And real drums sound so much better than those crappy drums you can... Oh, look, I shouldn't say that. There are some good 
drum machine programs out there now, but you know, they're not as good as Drew or Jim. I'm also a huge believer in working time effectively or efficiently. So something like that, one take through, done. Drums work, always listen to the kick if you're playing bass. And these will sound great once I actually layer these up as well. And I should point out what I like to do now too is label these as well. So uh, I go to here, and as I export these, I like to call them a specific a specific thing. All right, they're all the way back in tracks. So I want to call this one uh, sort of a rock in A. A C D, A C D, <laughs> uh, and then I in brackets because this is the change I put F G in brackets, and that's why I call it. I call it rock in A C D F G. And I put that in there because now that I'm starting to accrue like, you know, I've just recorded about ten or so new backing tracks. Remembering where the changes are sometimes, I'm like, now, what was the change on that one? And I like to just be able to look at it and go, okay, they're the changes. So uh, it makes it a lot easier that way. So we'll go back to these, do all of these now. I can't even remember what the last track was. So this is why I do this. I think it was the one in E, but let me just have another listen. Yeah, all right, so this is, this is cool, actually. I just wanted to bring the level of that down just a little bit. It's easy to get the bass too loud. So this one I'm going to call um, Rock Blues Riff in E, and it's got a rundown. B, B A G E, B A E G, and it, then it goes to an A. I could put that in there if I need to. I don't normally need to. Once I can see that, I'll remember it. Anyway. I always listen to them before I go to record, but. Sometimes I don't anticipate uh, the change 100% of the time, so um, that's that one done. Let's hope this camera can see. So yeah, we should be able to see. I've got all of these new tracks that I'm working on just for the channel, and they're just from this year. Uh, I started doing this a few weeks ago, and you're gonna hear a whole lot of different things coming up on the channel. I've done some really cool uh, blues ones, as well as some sort of Van Morrison inspired ones some heavy rock sort of stuff. I had some Red Hot Chili Peppers style tracks and I can't play bass like that obviously, but just those particular types of changes. I've done one like that as well, Fun Loving Criminals kind of groove. Um, just things that I think will work as well as some blues rock stuff as well. So that pretty much sums it up. That's all I do. And now when I go to do my videos, I can choose something that suits whatever it is I'm doing the video for or just choose something different from the video beforehand. So coming up on the channel, I have to do a pedal called the Dan Electro Cash Cow, I think it's called. It's a distortion pedal, it's just come out. So odds are I'm gonna choose one of these two heavy ones to use over that. I can layer up a really cool riff, like chord part, and then do some soloing over the top. Now the solos always work best when either the drums escalate or the chord progression kind of goes somewhere. So the one with the F and the G that I did, that would be a really good track for doing with, you know, if you're using for that particular pedal because the solo can actually go somewhere in relation to the music and all that kind of stuff. So these are really, really simple. I don't spend too much time coming up with them because I, I don't feel like that's, to make them overly complicated just for a YouTube video isn't really essential. I just like to get simple things that people can listen to and not have to be too confused where the rhythm is or anything like that. I just want it to sound like a regular tune with some cool guitar parts over the top. So that's it, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know the audio is different to what I would normally use for a video, I don't have my shirt mic and all that kind of stuff, but it's a little bit of a behind the scenes video, so I hope this was helpful if you make your own content or you're thinking about it. This is how I go about doing it. If you wanna find out more about Drew or Jim, links up in the cards. Great drum tracks, guys. Definitely check them out, even if you just wanna to practice to them. They're awesome, so yeah, go check them out. Alright guys, take it easy, catch you soon. See ya.